I'm going to take you on a tour of the LabVIEW Modulation Toolkit. Let me go ahead and thumbtack down this palette for convenience. And I'll begin by looking at components in the uh, analog subpalette first. You can get a nice description of each sub-VI by invoking the context help. Under modulation schemes, you see that we have amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and phase modulation. Upconvert is the thing that we usually think of as when you, when you take the product of a sinusoid and your baseband signal and then shift that up to some um, new carrier frequency. Down conversion would be the demodulation that occurs at the beginning of the receiver. And then we have sub VIs that handle the uh, appropriate demodulation for each of those three different modulation schemes. Under utilities, there is a, a couple helper sub VIs that can do things like extracting components from the complex baseband, doing resampling as needed to match different sampling frequencies, and also a PLL or a face lock loop is available. Quite a bit more going on inside the digital sub palette. Begin by looking at the various modulation schemes that are offered. We have the fairly simple amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying, and phase shift keying. Pulse amplitude modulation, uh, what we think of as a baseband modulation technique. This is minimum shift keying and continuous phase modulation, and finally QAM, or Quadrature Amplitude Modulation. Under the demodulation subpalette, we see the same uh, modulation schemes and simply their counterparts to uh, serve at the receiver end. Upconvert and downconvert, that's similar to what we looked at in the analog subpalette, and this is our method for translating the complex baseband up to the uh, carrier frequency. Generate bits is available to generate random bit sequences of various types. A variety of channel coding sub VIs are available as well. Spread symbols is associated with direct sequence spread spectrum and we have a variety of convolutional encoders as well as block coders. For example, the Hamming block code shows up here. And a couple other sub VIs also related to channel coding. All right, lots of possibilities there. Channel decoding is the counterpart to channel encoding, so these would undo the channel coding operation. A variety of impairments are possible, for example, additive white Gaussian noise. Phase noise, especially simulating jitter, is available. Multitone interference and then fading, that is, as the uh, power level of the signal is varying uh, across time. And again, to implement schemes that are based on interleaving things like um, parity check words and so on, all of this is available as well. So uh, de-interleaving de would be its counterpart too. 
Equalization has to do with accounting for the finite bandwidth of a channel as well as uh, perhaps uh, a specific shape for the channel bandpass response. And equalization then can correct for this behavior and minimize or eliminate inter-symbol interference. Again, the uh, visualization techniques that are available show up in two places, as it turns out. And the best place to add any one of these visualizations is directly on the front panel. And I'll, I'll show you why here in a moment. For example, if we place the constellation graph or any one of these these particular diagrams, but I'll, I'll pick on the constellation graph as an example. See back on the block diagram, it automatically places the sub VI and then configures it with a particular indicator as well as a constant to specify what type of graph is required. So a number of, of different visualizations are that are important to communication systems are available in this sub palette. Here you can measure the, the bit error rate associated with your transmitter receiver combination and have another or a variety of other measurement techniques that are available as well. And finally, looking at utilities, this one is important where you generate the system parameters specific to each modulation scheme. This is how you can introduce pulse shaping, such as with a raised cosine pulse shape, for example. Sync parameters is, is important for setting up your receiver. And then an, a number of these other sub VIs are useful in various contexts. So I'd encourage you to explore these a little bit more on your own. All right, that concludes the tour of the modulation toolkit.